introduce myself. I am Maxim, software engineer with experience in diverse technological stacks, but Java is my favorite platform. Uh, that's why I'll show you some examples uh, in Java. And today I'm going to share with you my experience in writing uh, clean, maintainable, and uh, testable code. So before starting, let me let me emphasize that everything I'll tell you is solely my point of view based on books, articles, and my own experience. And uh, actually, I don't have a silver bullet that can resolve all our issues and our problems, but I can share with you some best practices that uh, I use every day. Uh, so our agenda comprises of introduction, uh, clean code, best practices, automation testing, and some uh, useful tools that could be uh, uh, used uh, in daily routine by Java engineers. Um, and we will play uh, a game. Uh, I uh, prepared for you some questions. So, uh, First, I would like to raise uh, first question, the motivation. Why uh, do we need to write uh, clean, maintainable, and uh, testable uh, code? To understand why, from my point of view, we need to answer two uh, questions. How can we meet client's expectation? And what do I, as software engineer, want? Uh, the first question, uh, the answer to first question, uh, yeah, it's a little bit complicated because uh, there are many clients' requirements such as functional, non-functional aspects, performance, uh, security, and so on. But I would like to highlight only two of them. Uh, first, it's a reliable software application. Uh, as you know, reliable software builds trust between uh, clients and software providers, so us. And it leads to long-term relationship and positive word of mouth referrals. But at the same time, surprise, surprise, uh, clients usually want to see new features that will help them stand out among other competitors. Uh, from my point of view, in my perspective, this requirement seems to be conflicted. Uh, why? Uh, it's because if our goal to maintain robust application, then making any changes should be uh, minimized for sure. However, any modification uh, we do may carry the risk of potential breaking the application or certain components of it. Uh, so complicated question. And the next one, uh, what I would like. I would like to read and understand code base at glance, especially uh, when I'm newcomer. I just uh, joined the team and there are lots and lots of uh, code and I would like to understand it easily and uh, 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 it's my, <laughs> uh, my um, uh, it would be better. Uh, the next, uh, I would like to uh, receive feedback after my work is done uh, as quick as possible. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I can wait, wait for uh, 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 feedback from uh, QC team and actually it's it happened, but I would like to get this feedback much uh, earlier. Uh, I would like to de uh, detect bugs uh, earlier than clients would find them. Uh, I want to be uh, confident in refactoring uh, because I don't want to break something else while I implement uh, some new feature or uh, uh, fix some bugs. Uh, so I, I don't I, I, I don't want uh, that uh, something happened like I fix uh, one bug and a couple other appeared after that. And uh, uh, I would like to work in with uh, cutting edge uh, libraries and technologies, uh, even if in my current project, for instance, I don't we don't use uh, Java 21. Yeah, in my current project, we 
uh, use Java 8, and we are going to uh, migrate to uh, 17. But anyway, uh, we uh, need to be prepared to make this migration in the future. Uh, so I suppose it's uh, complicated questions, but from my point of view, answer for uh, these questions uh, could be uh, write clean and maintainable code, uh, apply best practices, and cover maintain functionality with uh, tests. Um, and uh, we uh, will discuss it uh, uh, further. So let's start from uh, clean code. Uh, what is uh, clean code uh, itself? Uh, from my, my point of view, clean code is when you are not familiar with code base too much, but you intuitively understand how it works. And you can, can easily read and write this code without learning uh, uh, documentation, yeah? Or you just uh, understand how it uh, works at glance. And I think uh, brilliant examples uh, is Java standard library such uh, Java collection framework. And uh, how can we learn uh, clean code? Uh, personally, I love learning code by example. So we can just uh, read source uh, of all libraries and from frameworks which we use. And uh, fortunately in Java, it's uh, mostly open source. So it's easy to uh, uh, deep dive this code. And uh, for sure, additionally, uh, we can read uh, uh, books, articles, uh, watch video. And uh, I believe that the most uh, 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 the most uh, uh, famous books is uh, Clean Code by Uncle Bob. And uh, I have a question. Have you read this book? No. Yes, you, you can uh, use chat for this if you want. Uh, put pluses or minuses. Yes, yeah, min minuses, pluses, pluses, yeah. Great, great. Uh, yeah, but at least uh, I hope that you have heard about this uh, book. Yeah, great. Thank you. Somebody uh, read, somebody, uh, I guess, will uh, read in the future uh, because it's worth uh, to do it. Uh, but anyway, uh, despite of some of us uh, who present in this uh, event uh, read uh, this book, somebody know. I will uh, list in uh, the main principles described it in this book, and afterwards I will some use some examples, and we will play uh, games. And uh, if you have read this book, it's okay. You will uh, uh, understand what happened, and we choose proper answers. But if you haven't read this book, you will just try to guess, and I guess it will be uh, interesting for you. So the main principles uh, described it in this book. Uh, first, uh, it's uh, use descriptive and uh, meaningful names. Uh, it allows us to read uh, code, code easily and understand how it works. Uh, keep methods small and focused on uh, single tasks. Uh, avoid redundant and unnecessary comments. Avoid magic numbers. Uh, maintain consistent formatting in order to uh, code uh, project convention. Uh, avoid deep nesting, uh, limited function arguments, avoid side effects, uh, use a single layer of abstraction for a function, write testable code, uh, perform uh, continuous refactoring code to improve its structure, and apply best practices such uh, don't repeat yourself, keep it stupid simple, and you aren't gonna need it. Uh, so uh, the list is uh, not comprehensible, but at least uh, it uh, the best uh, and main principles which we can use. And at this point, I would like to play with you some game. Could you please scan this uh, QR code, or I will share with you a link 
link, I suppose it could be co copy. Yeah, oh no, no. Oh, I see some four, six players is here. Great, great. Let me find my mentee. Great. Great, 11 players here. Great, so are you ready to play in some game? So uh, first of all, my questions uh, you can uh, see on your screen and additionally you will see on your devices. Uh, the first question, it's uh, all okay. question related to principles, uh, the clean code principles. And uh, could you please uh, uh, take a look at this piece of code? And uh, I start the first question. Yeah, uh, the first question you can answer after one seconds. Uh, what do you think? What is wrong with this name of this variable? No value declared. Maybe, but there are another options. One like comments are prohibited. Not self-descriptive uh, and meaningful name. The variable names too short and may cause confusion or does not follow naming conventions. Oh, and nine of 11 uh, uh, guessed or maybe known the answer. Yeah, for this question. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the first uh, principle use descriptive and meaningful names. And uh, this name uh, consists only one letter, yeah, D. And uh, to explain what uh, this uh, variable uh, consists, we need to add uh, these uh, nasty uh, comments. And I believe it could be better uh, just rename of this method and get rid of these comments. What do you think about it? Okay, let's move on. We have another question. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, the second question, uh, let's, ta let's take a look at this uh, piece of code. What is wrong with this method? We have methods that called create user and send email. Uh, after five seconds, you can answer. Yeah, what's wrong? Method should be small and focused on a single task. The method lacks proper access modifiers or there are no error handling mechanism implemented within the method. And everyone uh, choose right answer. Yeah, method should be small. Uh, yeah, small and focused on a single tasks. It's uh, better uh, for maintaining this code. And uh, it's better to have two separate methods. The first one create user, the second one send email, and uh, eventually somehow we uh, uh, invoke this method. So, so far, so good. We have uh, additional one qu question. To this yeah. One. Here, the deal, you created two methods that do separate things. In this case, the previous method, you just replace it with two methods. Like, if you still need to create a user and send an email, 
you just cannot pick one of those to those to those uh do you mean things. that we we can uh, so you guys basically will invoke those two methods here uh yeah so uh, that you actually, still keep the name create user and send me uh, yeah yeah uh, i agree okay. with you in some in some cases uh it makes sense yeah uh i agree with you mm. I have flow of memory. I have to close my other window because, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, for sure, uh, we can uh, invoke these uh, two methods uh, inside create user sent emails, but it depends on context. Yeah. In this uh, simple um, examples, it uh, could be. Uh, yeah all the create user method and return a user type and this user type to be argument for the send mail possible possible solution yeah i agree with you because to, uh, but... to have already a user uh, exactly yeah it uh, could be could be the same yeah uh, but uh, we shouldn't mi uh, mix it in one me method i mean i mean um there are another principles for instance uh, i don't add it as a question um, i did it add it as a question but uh, not mix different uh, levels of abstraction mm -hmm. i mean if we have uh, uh, low level of, of abstraction it could be uh, better to separate in uh, other uh, separate method okay Mm, do you have additional comments, questions to this uh, piece of code? Okay, let's move on. The third question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the third question is, uh, let's take a look at this uh, piece of code and let's think what is wrong with this comment? It's obvious what it does. Like, uh, there's no point of commenting code that is like scripted. It's redundant. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We have uh, options, ambitious, ambiguous comments, unclear uh, about operation. Comment lacks context for clarity, or it's redundant or an unnecessary comment. For sure. Let's five seconds, three seconds. Yeah, and everyone uh, make uh, uh, right choice. Yeah, for sure, it's redundant or unnecessary because everyone understand that. Uh, plus plus it's uh, increment in uh, C sharp uh, C, in Java and many other languages and it's redundant actually. Um, I think that better comment uh, it's uh, get rid of any comments. yeah. Uh, I believe that uh, it's uh, possible to write code without comments in many cases, yeah. Uh, for sure, we can't avoid uh, comments when we create some public API uh, or some uh, libraries for general purposes, for instance, like uh, Java collection from work or any other. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, in our daily routine, uh, when usually we don't uh, work with uh, such public libraries, uh, we can avoid such redundant uh, comments. Okay, the fourth question. Uh, what do you think, what's wrong with this uh, if statement? You can avoid, it's no error handling. Uh, lack of comments for clarity, inefficient code structure, or maybe it used magic number.
everyone has what. And uh, actually the right answer is used magic number. Yeah, this uh, literal uh, 404, it's better to um, mm. extract as a constant or final uh, variable in Java. Yeah. Generally, I agree, but if somebody doesn't know what 404 is, they might reconsider their career choice at this point. Uh, that's why we have uh, we we can uh, introduce a final variable or constant, not found status code, uh, that uh, actually uh, consists descriptive in meaningful name, and in this way we understand this code uh, much better. Don't you think? I think here the best approach is to use uh, a HTTP library because contain all uh, the answer and just refer to this one and can compare exactly with the value without knowing if four or zero, you just need to use the uh, not found uh, answer for HTTP. I agree. I, I completely agree with you. If we have some uh, libraries, which is used uh, in our application, yeah, it's uh, it's better not to introduce uh, additional uh, uh, constant. Uh, uh, it's better to use existing one, but uh, it's just example. Yeah, it's just example uh, uh, in uh, other um, uh, situation, in other uh, our daily routine tasks, uh, we need to introduce some uh, additional variable uh, constants or literals. For instance, it could be string literals. Yeah, uh, uh, predefined uh, some uh, data, predefined some literals, uh, string. And uh, it, uh, I have seen in uh, uh, in uh, different uh, projects that uh, uh, not everyone, uh, the uh, engineers introduce uh, such uh, uh, constants, such final variables and uh, tend to use uh, literals as is. And uh, you can uh, just uh, misspell uh, some uh, literals, some um, string, and uh, it could uh, lead to unpredictable, uh, for instance, bugs. And uh, uh, it's uh, actually uh, hard to uh, find it. So uh, yeah, uh, next question. Uh, six player is ready, seven player is ready. Great, and uh, eight. Uh, what do you think, what's wrong with this piece of code? It's uh, conditional, some condition, and something happened inside it. Uh, it's excessive intonation, uh, lack of error handling. It's used deep nesting and redundant conditions. Yeah, we don't uh, know what happened inside this uh, second if, but something important happened actually. Everyone has voted and uh, yeah, it's used deep nesting. And uh, it's better to avoid uh, deep nesting. It's better to nest it as it possible. And uh, if we uh, have uh, faced it with this deep nesting, it's better to, um, for instance, introduce uh, new methods and uh, uh, refactor our code to, uh, to make this code uh, more readable. And there are different techniques to achieve it. Uh, I will show you uh, one source uh, that uh, described um, many techniques, actually. So, uh, so sorry, but if we have a two-dimensional uh, array and we want to iterate every row and column, do we uh, can we do it uh, following to your example, or rather not? Mm, uh, you know, uh, I agree with you. Uh, there are some. Um, a situation when we uh, need to use common sense, actually, yeah? There are a general uh, 
recommendation and general principles, but sometimes we, we can step uh, uh, over and uh, use uh, deeper uh, nesting, but uh, actually it's um, uh, okay. too hard uh, to, uh, fo uh, to follow code, sorry, um, let me, let me uh, continue. Uh, let me, uh, to follow code when we have, for instance, five nesting uh, conditions or okay. maybe more. Do you agree with okay. me? Uh, um, okay, fine. Uh, I understand that we should avoid nesting condition uh, unless it is uh, unavailable uh, and we have to do it. But in general, uh, I, uh, I understand that we should avoid this kind of uh, nesting. In general, yeah. And for, for, for instance, in these uh, uh, examples, we just uh, could re uh, replace the second if, uh, the second conditional, and uh, move this uh, chicken on the uh, 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 first conditional. Yeah, I, I, I suppose mm -hmm. it's uh, easy, easy ref for refactoring. Yeah, for, but, for this. But cannot be avoided when we work with matrix. Yeah. Yeah, in some uh, in some uh, tasks, yeah, we can't uh, avoid for sure. But at the same time, we can um, move this logic uh, if it is possible in order to uh, uh, our tasks to some method. For instance, this if move to uh, method, and in this uh, case, we can uh, at least this piece of code make. Uh, uh, not so nested, yeah, uh, uh, and make it flatter. Uh, yeah, for sure, it depends on the code. In uh, each uh, particular cases, we should uh, find the better solution, yeah. But general idea, try to avoid. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, we have another questions. Uh, yeah six players are ready so uh what do you think what's ro what's wrong with this method let me just make it wider a little bit yeah with this and yeah with this method what's wrong what do you think and um Uh, inefficient error handling, lack of access modifier is too many method arguments and the missing return type declaration. What do you think uh, wrong with this method? Yeah, and most of you answered that it's two method arguments. How many arguments uh, is okay for uh, method? What do you think? As least as possible. <laughs> yeah. For sure, uh, the uh, ideal amount is zero, but uh, at the same time, it's uh, almost impossible to write code that uh, contains all, only method with zero arguments. Uh, from my point of view, uh, not more than three arguments, it's okay. Uh, one, two, three, it's okay, but more, it's uh, we should refactor our code and uh, think how to wrap around some uh, object. And in this uh, particular case, it's too easy to, to do it because actually this data, customer name, customer address, uh, product name and quantity relates to some order. It's obvious. So that's why we just wrap it in one uh, uh, object uh, that contains all of this data and pass only one argument. Uh, I think it uh, um, makes sense. What do you think? Max three or oh, agree. Yeah. And uh, uh, I have seen a code which, uh, in which uh, uh, in productive code, uh, a method uh, allowed to um, receive uh, more than six arguments. And moreover, in some times it's uh, very uh, weird. It looks like very weird. For, for instance, uh, we can method and pass uh, information about uh, some object and just uh, take um, 
um, attributes from this object. For instance, we have user, uh, we pass uh, user username, uh, user address, or user uh, something else. And uh, it's not uh, good to maintain this uh, such piece of code. And uh, I believe it could be refactored. Okay. I have uh, another question be, uh, before we move back to our presentation. And uh, what do you think, what's wrong with this uh, method, update customer status? We pass some uh, object as a customer and update status of this customer. For instance, it uh, became uh, active. Maybe it's uh, no role handling or inefficient database operations on lack of access control, or maybe it's possible side effects. Okay. Oh, yeah. Four uh, of you answered its possible side effect, uh, inefficient database operations one, and lack, lack of access control. And actually, uh, yeah, uh, one of the main principles uh, that described in the clean code is avoid side effects. And uh, maybe it's uh, from these uh, uh, examples is not clear, but, uh, it's better uh, to make to understand what actually happened inside this method. Uh, the ideal solution is not to uh, change this object inside this method, yeah, but uh, return a new status or new object which was changed, yeah. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I have seen uh, a very weird examples when a side effects become uh, very awful uh, uh, st status uh, no, uh, situation. For instance, uh, can you imagine when uh, somebody made up change object inside to string method? Yeah, as we uh, known, there are two string method uh, which actually should re uh, return a string representation of this object. And uh, somebody decided that it's a good idea to uh, make some operation uh, around this method. And uh, this method uh, is changes every is changing every time when we invoke method to string. In uh, uh, my example, uh, uh, string which uh, um, consists inside uh, this object was changes every time when we invoke method to string. So um, uh, I believe uh, again, uh, there are for instance, approach when we use uh, some context and pass this context inside some method inside this method, uh, such happened in, uh, with this context and this context is changes. Now, from my, my point of view, uh, we can refactor all uh, everything it and can uh, avoid these uh, side effects. In, in this way, uh, code uh, become more uh, testable and uh, readable. Okay, um, let's uh, move back to our presentation and let's uh, come back to main question. Uh, how actually clean code help us in our daily routine to write clean and maintainable and testable code. First of all, uh, we reduce maintenance burden because every time when we uh, write dirty code, yeah, we have to create some uh, additional tasks, uh, take depth to clean this code. And uh, uh, I have heard one uh, brilliant uh, uh, state that uh, uh, refactoring code today will save your time tomorrow. And I believe that it's related to clean code as well. 
and allow us speed up our development because we are using good practices uh, out of the box, uh, increase uh, testability and build elegant solutions for um, our complex uh, problems. Uh, the next uh, part uh, I would like to discuss with you is uh, best practices. And uh, I gather uh, some of them, for instance, uh, solid principles. Uh, have you heard about it? Have you? Do you know uh, what is solid stand for? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we will see uh, how good you in solid principles. Um, okay, uh, uh, as we know, solid principles, uh, it's uh, abbreviation, uh, single responsibility, open close principle, list scope substitution, uh, principle integration, uh, interface aggregation, and dependency injection. And uh, to be honest, uh, mm, I don't remember uh, ever using interface aggregation principles in my uh, career. Uh, because uh, I suppose it's most needed uh, when you create um, library uh, in general purpose, purposes like uh, Java collection framework or something else. However, uh, we use single responsibility dependency inversion principle very often. And let's uh, move back to our examples and our quizzes. We can proceed it. And the next question I would like to discuss with you Yeah, we have leaderboard and Andrea is uh, the best. Great, let's move on. And uh, you can come back to our questions and uh, let's discuss, uh, let's take a look at this example. Uh, we have class ML center. Uh, it contains uh, two methods, uh, generate content and send email. And um, actually it's look not bad, but I suppose you uh, could guess or may understand what is wrong with this piece of code. So I start uh, my question and you can answer. Maybe it's inadequate hand error handling. Uh, maybe it's break single responsibility principles. Maybe it's lack of abstraction, or maybe it violates encapsulation. What do you think the right answer for this uh, question? Five seconds to end. Okay, great. And most of you uh, give Ryan right answer. It breaks single responsibility, yeah? Uh, I suppose you understand that uh, what is single responsibility? Yeah, uh, we uh, have to have only one reason to change uh, this class. And actually in previous example, we have two reasons to change this class. First reason, uh, for instance, we uh, change uh, source of uh, content, which should be generated for this uh, email, for sending this email, yeah. For instance, we can, decided uh, to use some database, uh, despite of using some uh, uh, literals, yeah, to uh, create our uh, 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 email. And the second one, yeah, it's uh, actually sending email. Maybe we uh, uh, change something inside this uh, implementation. For instance, we decided to add some login and there are two reasons to change it. So a um, uh, better solution could uh, be if we have uh, two separate, separate classes. Yeah, it's uh, very similar uh, to uh, method. Yeah, methods should uh, be small and uh, uh, solve only one task. Um, the same solution uh, uh, we see here, but I suppose you see some one additional improvements which could be 
uh, could be done. Uh, let's think about it. And I will ask you the last question in this topic. Uh, what is wrong with email sender to class? What do you think? Seven uh, players are ready. Okay, I hit enter and you can answer. Uh, it violates single responsibility principles. It uh, violates dependency inversion principle, inefficient metal method chaining or poor naming convention. There are only one answer. Yeah, maybe you can choose several. Uh, you, you may think that there are several uh, issues, but actually it's only one. Yeah, and uh, our answer is divided. Yeah, three of you uh, choose that it violate dependency inversion principles. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, first of all, uh, let's imagine uh, we need to test this method. Uh, uh, we need to write a unit test, for instance. Yeah, uh, what is unit test? It, test that uh, should be written for a test uh, unit, yeah, for test some single method, not um, integrate uh, with an another uh, uh, service or object. How can we separate this test? How can we substitute this uh, email generator content to some mock? Yeah, or uh, how can we, can we test it independently? Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, here, uh, because we have to tie dependency be between these uh, two. So uh, from my point of view, it's better to inject this object. Uh, and uh, there are different options, for instance, in the uh, uh, Spring, we can inject it using a setter uh, uh, by field directly. And uh, the better way it's uh, inject it uh, using uh, constructor through constructor. Uh, email. And um, main content generator. And if we inject uh, this uh, dependency using constructor, first of all, we can uh, mark this. Uh, field as final, which is uh, impossible if we inject it uh, by field or uh, through setter, uh, because in this particular case, uh, case we uh, have not optional uh, dependency, but uh, required dependency. I have a question. Yeah. For this case, why um, the poor name conversion not, is not the correct answer? Because based by the name of the class, email sender two, it's not a good title and is ambiguous name. Okay, okay, I looks agree. like I agree. Uh, both uh, is the correct uh, variance yeah. for this. Yeah, uh, I agree with you, but it's just for uh, this demo because I have already had uh, uh, this uh, class. Yeah, and but, uh, uh, that's why that's, okay. that's why I uh, I needed to uh, to 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 call it uh, SML Center too. But I agree with you; it's not uh, the first best, uh, name. Yeah, the first thing that comes uh, is uh, re um, read the name of the class. Yeah, yeah. So but, the focus yeah. is on this one. Yeah, I agree with you, but uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I I suppose that uh, uh, pay your attention at another uh, principles, yeah, dependency inversion principles, and uh, inter uh, make it uh, in this way. But I agree with you; it's not a good name as well. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Uh, how solid principle help us? Yeah. Uh, for sure, it allow us increase uh, maintainability, testability, reusability, and uh, for sure, uh, flexibility. 
Uh, another tools uh, which we could use, uh, it's design Sorry. patterns. Yeah. Can I have a question for the previous slide? Yeah. Could you give an example for risk of substitution principle? I always have a problem to understanding this one and finding a good example. Open, close, uh, list no, of no, substitution, list of substitution. List of substitution. Okay, mm -hmm. list of substitution. It's a principle when we uh, uh, replace objects uh, that base uh, class with object of derivative class without bre breaking our program pro programs. So let me just uh, make this some space public stat static void main, yeah. And for instance, we have some uh, base class, uh, for instance, uh, class animal, let it be for, uh, for uh, simplicity, yeah. And uh, for instance, uh, animal, uh, let me just uh, just rough uh, example, which makes in my mind right now. Uh, for instance, we can uh, have, uh, I don't know, um, Boolean uh, is uh, alive, just, just in this case. Better will be can run, for example. <laughs> okay, can run, uh, yeah, I return, uh, just uh, uh, example, yeah, uh, return, uh, True, for instance, just for instance. And uh, we can derive and uh, make, uh, for instance, bird. Yeah, class bird, bird. And this class extends uh, animal, extends animal. Animal. And for sure, we derive all methods uh, and fields uh, which described in base class. And uh, uh, we can, uh, for instance, uh, um, add Boolean. Boolean uh, can fly, yeah? yeah, can fly. And again, return true. Uh, something wrong with my idea. Anyway, uh, the idea which I would like to explain you, uh, we have uh, class animal, animal, animal. And uh, we can create a new animal, yeah, object. Yeah, it's obvious, I suppose, for you. Mm, yeah, it's, 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 doesn't, uh, it's static, yeah, static, for sure, static. Um, uh, what uh, tells us, uh, what list of substitution tells us? It tells us that we can replace object based class, uh, animals class, with object derived class. So we can replace it to bird. And our program should work as expected, yeah, without uh, any breaking. Uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, we can extend our uh, classes and our uh, and extend uh, functionality of uh, derived classes, but it's wrong to um, make uh, unexpected changes. For instance, it's wrong to override 
uh, this method, for instance, over light, over uh, uh, is alive boolean, uh, boolean, in some some wrong way. I, I don't know. It's uh, actually not uh, right uh, example, but for instance, uh, do something that actually not related to um, to this method. Yeah, so uh, main uh, idea, least substitution to, uh, principle is uh, this one without any changes. Okay, you are Maybe at some... You also should put uh, at the next line, animal is alive in and that code, if you replace bird, for, for example, with animal will demonstrate uh, least code substitution. So if uh, you call animal dot is alive, for example. Is alive, yeah. Yeah, and now it's working code. And the list code substitution principle is if you try to replace child to uh, class with parent, for example, bird with animal, nothing will destroy. Uh, the yeah. code still yeah. will be working. Yeah, exactly. So sh we should override this method in proper way. Uh, in the in the way that uh, will not break our, our code. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I suppose it's possible to write uh, overwrite this uh, method in the way that uh, actually our code uh, breaks. <laughs> I can't imagine how it's possible, but uh, okay. Yeah, mutable and mutable classes. Okay, uh, is it clear for you this explanation? Uh, to be honest, you just presented inheritance, so not yeah, really, but yeah. the, the example yeah. given by Yuri makes uh, so much more sense, so how it is broken by Java uh, creators, so... List of substitution that, principle, uh, you can look at Java collection, we have an interface list and lots of different... But, uh, but yeah, it's, thank you it's, for your time. Uh, it's, it's uh, okay, very good example, Yuri, thank you, okay. Yuri, thank you for your help. Okay, let's move on. Uh, uh, design patterns. Uh, have you read this book? I haven't read this book actually, because I think it's a little bit uh, obsolete. Yeah, uh, actually uh, I tried to read this book but uh, uh, it's uh, because of it's all obsolete, I haven't done it. But anyway, um, anyway, uh, it's good book to read uh, uh, if you would like. But there are better uh, approach. Uh, there are uh, site uh, which I recommend you. It's called Refactoring Guru. Uh, um, uh, it was. Uh, uh, created by Ukrainian software engineer and and offers uh, comprehensive guides uh, of examples uh, on software design principles, patterns, and refactoring strategies. And actually, it's a compilation of two books. Uh, first book is the design patterns, and the second one it's refactoring by uh, Martin Fowler. Uh, so uh, I, I uh, mentioned that uh, this uh, we can find uh, good uh, uh, practices how to refactor our, our code, for instance, related to nesting uh, issue which we face it. For instance, um, uh, simplify conditional expression. For instance, we have uh, different option, uh, even uh, replace uh, to uh, conditional with a polymorphism in such, in, in the, some cases, it's uh, worse to do it. So uh, I recommend you this uh, uh, source of information. It's very good, really. Yeah, let me just find the chart. Yeah, this chart. Yeah, and yeah, great. So, uh, and actually there are many different uh, uh, patterns and since, since uh, the uh, uh, 
uh, book was written uh, many years ago. Uh, many other uh, patterns were uh, uh, have emerged. For instance, uh, uh, DAO repository patterns. Uh, but uh, I highlighted uh, builder. Uh, DAO repository adapter decorator chain of responsibility and template method strategy. Uh, these uh, patterns are used uh, uh, very often, so I recommend to use it uh, as well. So, uh, how design pattern help us? It allow us increase uh, productivity uh, because actually you don't need to invent uh, a wheel uh, again; uh, it just use it. Uh, it uh, allow us to uh, uh, use a reusable solution and uh, increase uh, maintainability and design flexibility. So I encourage you to learn patterns if you uh, didn't do it, uh, haven't do it yet. And um, another uh, tools which we can use is uh, uh, TDD, TDD or designed. Uh, 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 test-driven uh, development, sorry. Yeah, it's approach uh, where tests are written uh, before actual code implementation. And uh, we write tests uh, after write code, run all tests. And uh, if uh, some test fails, we fix it. We come back and uh, eventually refactor code. Um, uh, I tried to use this approach in my on my one uh, one of the project, uh, but uh, to be honest, uh, you need to be aware of code base very well. And uh, additionally, it's good to have uh, clear requirements and test cases in advance before we st you start working on it. So, uh, how can it help us? It allow us improve code uh, quality. Uh, uh, detect uh, uh, bugs much earlier, uh, tests, uh, it's actually uh, uh, documentation, uh, increase uh, our confidence in refactoring because actually it's uh, hard to uh, improve something, uh, apply best practices or clean uh, code uh, practices when we are not sure that after it, uh, uh, it works. Um, it allowed us to uh, achieve uh, faster feedback. And uh, the next question uh, I would like to discuss with you is automation testing. And uh, first question, why do we need it all? Uh, uh, unfortunately, I have seen uh, that uh, uh, some projects lack uh, enough uh, test tests, uh, unit tests, integration tests that Cover code, and uh, I believe that uh, uh, using tests and automation tests allow us identify bugs more much earlier, ensure code quality, facilitate refactoring, learn code base deeper, provide uh, documentation, and enable regression testings. And uh, how to uh, write uh, this? Tests. Uh, there are concepts that called uh, test pyramid, and uh, actually it illustrates the ideal distribution of different type of tests in uh, test strategy. Uh, so, uh, uh, as we can see, the unit tests uh, should be uh, more um, than uh, on the other uh, tests on other levels. Uh, it's because unit tests are uh, cheaper cheaper uh, because it uh, runs faster than other type of tests. Uh, integration tests uh, could be less and uh, a few manual and exploratory tests. And um, uh, the, when we uh, uh, cover our code by test, we should understand test metrics such as uh, test coverage and uh, ideal uh, Goal is uh, cover code uh, uh, on one hundred percent, but uh, it's important to note that not all code actually requires coverage. For instance, getter setters uh, might not need uh, testing. So, uh, actual co cover code coverage could be uh, eighteen, 
90 uh, percent and it's enough and um, uh, the another question um, how can we write good tests sometimes it's uh, difficult especially if we for instance um, uh, try to implement integration tests or api tests and uh, from my point of view it's a good idea when engineers collaborate with uh, uh, testers uh, with QA, QC guys, because together uh, we can uh, understand on which level we cover this test and uh, um, how many this test should be. Okay. So yeah, I'm almost done. And uh, the last things I would like to share you, it's useful tools, yeah. Uh, uh, despite IntelliJ IDEA has a very, it's very useful uh, uh, tool for every day. There are uh, additional uh, plugins could be used. For instance, I uh, uh, find out that Sonar Lint, Lint is a very useful tool, which allow me to understand what uh, um, uh, bed with my code uh, directly in idea without running pipelines. Uh, sequence di diagram plugins, uh, it's a very useful, useful tool, but um, I see that uh, I out of uh, memory in my machine, I, uh, I would like, I don't like to, I, I don't want to, uh, uh, to uh, show you it uh, because uh, I expect to uh, fail. Um, it will take some time, but I encourage you to try. It's very, very useful tools. For instance, as we always know, uh, all known that uh, there are, uh, 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 it's possible to create class diagram using uh, G um, IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate version, but uh, it's sometimes it's useful to create sequence diagram. For instance, we investigate some bug and we uh, have to understand uh, we know uh, the point where it happened when something, uh, for instance, something throw uh, some exception, but how uh, to uh, uh, understand uh, which uh, method or which object uh, is used to this. Uh, and it's allowed to understand and investigate this uh, code very uh, much better. And uh, for sure, uh, AI tools is very useful to uh, in, uh, increase your productivity, to boost your productivity and make your code cleaner. So um, useful reference and that's all from me for today. Sorry for 